That, that does not happen. Okay. Sorry. You don't go from an animal to a person. That's kind of nice to know. Yeah. But some somebody told me they did a past life regression and they remember being a tree. Yeah. As far as we know. That they they have said that that doesn't happen from what they've told us. Okay. You, you could come back and you could come back as a different experience. Now one of the things that... But not everybody's honest either. So. Yeah. Now one of the things that people are have a, seen a lot of experiences is since sudden infant death. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not supposed to be a traumatic thing for the it is for the parents obviously losing a child but that individual soul came back or spirit came back to experience birth again nothing else but birth again and so once they've experienced it they're done with their experience Did, there was a case of a, a little boy that had died. and so they're done they don't need to be live a full life yeah. and that's why would they want that experience because you maybe they didn't have maybe they had c-section versus a birth experience i don't know so I don't know what the reasoning is, but the that's the explanation of a lot of the sudden infant deaths. It's just, a, it's not for us to be sad about it. It was meant to be that way. She'll come again. And so later on, she found out she was pregnant. She had a girl. Can you actually see the spirit? If the light reflects off them, yes. As they move around. Do you see anything here? I don't see. I My sensitivity is... Um, very bland. Um, if I feel pressure in my face or if I get sudden chill and my hair is standing up on my arms, that tells me a spirit is over my shoulder. Listening to the stories I'm telling, they like the stories. So can I tell you something? I was with my father the entire time he was dying and he's a kind of a science guy too. So we talked about this years before. You know, we've always had these conversations. He's just as interested in all this yeah. as me. So he let me record his death. And... Um, oh God, I forgot where I was going with this. Um, I can't remember what I was going to say about it. The way I have those things all the time. <laughs> in your moment. Yeah. Wow. I have a lot of them. Oh, I've been old girl. Whew. But, um, I can't remember it. But I remember seeing, okay, after he died, I just stayed with his body for about 20 minutes never been with a dead body I was obsessed to see what a dead body was like but meanwhile while he's just kind of laying there he's dead I'm over here like talking in the room to maybe oh now I remember so on my way out at right after that I get in my car and as I'm driving home my head all of a sudden had a sensation of being heavier than two or three bowling balls and I felt this like tingling prickly all over sensation, it just on the head and major pressure. Was that my father? Do probably. You know? There's a good chance. He's probably saying, I'm okay. It worked. Everything's done. Okay. Typically, when a loved one passes, a message will get to the loved ones who is left behind immediately or soon after, like funerals and stuff, to let them know everything's okay. They will try to communicate right away, saying, celebrate my life and don't cry for me. Um, my oldest son, um, when my husband died, we had a funeral in, on Monday down in Arkansas. And John lives in Minneapolis, so he and his wife and his one child at that time came flying down. And my other son came and some cousins, you know, they're all down in Arkansas. And um, we have to come back to Iowa because half the relatives are up here. So we're having a dual... Memorial service down there for his relatives that live down there, one up here for the relatives up here. And so everybody else had left that morning, Tuesday morning, and um, John and, and Sonia were, they had stayed in my house and they were getting ready to leave. And Sonia, he was all packed up, but Sonia was still getting, finishing putting makeup on and stuff, getting ready to go home. And John took Taylor, who was two and a half at the time, and was walking around our property. And we had just bought a brand new truck. In December, he died at the end of January, and um, we uh, had the truck parked in the barn, the sheep shed, whatever you want to call it. And so, anyway, John went out there, opened the door, and took Taylor and sat him on the lawn, riding lawnmower. <coughs> and as he's standing there, he said, "Hey, Mom," he said, "Have you ever got that feeling that somebody's looking at you?" And I go, "Yeah." He said, "Well, I did too." He said, "It was so bad." He said, "I turned around and looked at the truck, and their dad, his dad, was sitting in the front seat of the truck." big grin on his face, you know, like, I, I'm happy, you know, I'm sitting in my truck. Children see him. And uh, 
well, yeah. um, this 30 year old guy's on, you know, and yeah. he looked and he said, Dad, and he looked again, and when he looked the second time, yeah, yeah. He, you know, well, I see, I was the eyes. Running. So, you were talking about a dream, like when my grandma passed away, we were like really close. She lived in Centerville, and we live in Cedar Falls, but I used to come down like for two weeks, and I didn't really enjoy it. I don't think we're going to Centerville, it's not the greatest, yeah, you know. But I loved going to see her and stuff, and we did a lot of stuff. We were really close, and she died of Parkinson's. She was really sick for about 10 years. You know, Parkinson's was yeah. awful. And I had been wanting her to move to Cedar Falls in a nursing home so we could all be with her more because it's a over a three-hour right. drive. You know, it's just, right. you know, just pick up, and especially, like, in the fall because you don't want to drive at night because of the deer and right. stuff. And my grandpa was kind of a putz. And I always knew he kind of was, but he didn't want her to move and blah, blah, blah. And after she died, I really struggled, especially he moved to Cedar Falls for a while and was living in kind of an assisted living apartment. And he's got dementia, so he told me a lot of things probably that he would not have told me before, and I really realized. And I'm like a huge feminist, so even more so. I'm like, I wish I would have fought harder. I wish I would have done this. And I always wished, I thought I'd be so relieved when she died because she was so... It was such a horrible death, and she was such an amazing human being. I always wish I would have, like, your 